All right, well, we thank again uh, the people from Mars for uh, coming on the show, explaining the event. And uh, with that, we're going to bring on our, our final guest of the day, City Councilman from Lake Elmo. He was elected in 2012. He's a Lake Elmo resident and uh, Justin Bloyer. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Tony. Yeah, it's awesome that you finally got to come on for the first time. It's uh, an honor to have you here. And I got to know you while you were campaigning yeah. uh, in 2012. And I mean, you, you caught my eye right away because you're younger, you're passionate, you're energetic, uh, you have principles, and it seems like you're, you're running for the right reasons because you're not retired, you know, you still have a full-time job, right. uh, you have kids and, and a wife and all those beautiful things. Uh, uh, can you talk a little more about what was it that ignited your, your passions to actually seek to become a Lake Elmo City Councilman? You know, I've, I've always been interested in politics my entire life. I have a degree in political science, and um, my grandfather was a politician in St. Paul, and it's just... What, did he, what seat did he hold? He was a city council president. Okay. So I've, uh, I've always just been involved with it. I've been, you know, I've gone to the campaign uh, parties and the fundraisers and whatnot when he was uh, running back when I was a kid, and I've been exposed to it my whole life. And I knew that uh, that was something I wanted to do, as you say, on my bucket list, but... Um, it, it just seemed this was the right time. For some reason, all the stars lined up, and I was like, this is the time I need to run. And I did it, and I won the election, and here I am. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And uh, so your wife, was she supportive right away? Was she like, okay, Justin, let's do this, and hanging signs and everything of the sort? Or? My wife was very supportive um, during the election. She was a little skeptical at first. We, uh, I think when we first started this process, we uh, had our third child, Reese, had just recently been born, and... Um, so she was a little nervous about what the election was going to, or the campaign was going to entail and how much time it would be away from the family. But, um, you know, as one of those things, when she realized I was, I wanted to do this and I, we were going to do it, she was behind me 100 percent and, and she became a good campaign manager and partner through the, uh, through the election cycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember driving through Lake Elmo and <coughs> seeing Justin Bloyer signs everywhere. It seemed yeah. like you had a, a ton of support. Did you already have that support lined up, or did you have to go out there and, and earn some of that support? I, I think I had to earn the support. Um, I, I I started campaigning early. Mm -hmm. I was um, I, it, ironically it was my birthday, June 29th was the first day you were allowed to put signs up. So uh, I already had some signs lined up where they were going to go. Those signs went up, and then we just went from there on out. I was the first one to get out in the field campaigning, and and uh, you know everything just started, the the message resonated. It snowballed and the signs went up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted you to come on the show, sure. and I'm, gl I'm glad you're here, is because you're a younger guy. Uh, you know, a lot of people are tired of some of the dinosaur politicians right. that have been around forever, that are maintaining the status quo and, and kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And I love the fact that you're young and energe energetic and, and passionate. Um, can you talk about other people? Like, how can other people similar to you decide to get out there and run for city council or school board or you know, the state house? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't talk to that per se, but what I can say, I mean, you know, if you want to do it, go out and definitely do it because it's it's an experience, I imagine, whether you win or lose. But I can, I can tell you that that did resonate with the people of Lake Elmo. Um, politics were the same for a generation in Lake Elmo where you had the same names and the same people out there running the city. Mm -hmm. And to get young, a, a young group out there, myself and uh, the the uh, Mayor Pearson got out there, got our message across. Um, we've done things in Lake Elmo that people had talked about for generations. We just brought the sewer pipe up um, to start working on the Met Council mandate. And we're hoping that um, if we're very lucky, the Memorandum, memorandum of Understanding, which is what is uh, the Met Council has only with Lake Elmo um, to force us to grow. It's a, a punitive document if we don't meet these obligations. Um, we're working with the Met Council to get a reduction in our rec units, which is the number of um, units that have to be built in Lake Elmo and getting un out from underneath the Memorandum of Understanding. We're bringing new business to uh, Lake Elmo, bringing the sewer up to the old village, which is something they always talked about, but we're doing it. Um, working with uh, 3M to deal with some of our, our local issues, and we're doing all this with 100% developer financing. So the city and taxpayers are not on the hook for any of the development that's that's coming it's all um, it's all right to the developer, and um, I think that's really resonated with people. And we followed through with what we said we were going to do, and 
everything is going great in Lake Elmo right now. Mm. It sounds like you've been uh, working pretty hard on the city council in yeah. your first year. And as I stated earlier, you're also have a full-time job right. and your father, your husband, yep. you have three children. Yep. Can you talk a little more about how, how do you balance that out? And, and was city <coughs> council, is it, was it more work than what you thought it was going to be? Yes. Yes, it was definitely more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, my wife and I own a small business, and then we both have um, full-time jobs as well. So balancing that with the, the kids is, um, is tough, and, and we, we go out of our way to do it. Um, I, one thing I said is we get a stipend for doing that, but all that money goes towards um, you know, doing something with the kids, whether that's the vacation or whatnot. We're gonna, I know money doesn't buy happiness, but we're going to use that to try and spend time with the kids and uh, make up for any lost time from uh, being at meetings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we do with uh, the kids. And, um, well, the city council is different than yeah. like the uh, state senate or state house. The state, they have sessions. Right. But the city council is a, a year-round yep. obligation or commitment? A minimum of three organized meetings a month. And it's usually a lot more time during the week spent on that. And so, it, you know, the kids definitely notice. But... Um, it's it's good for them. It shows that you have to give back to the community and the kids come up and especially the oldest one, Vittorio, he comes up and sits in on some of the meetings and gets involved in stuff as best he can at seven years old. And so it's a good learning experience for them as well. Mm -hmm. And then what about, uh, you know, as far as the first year, you said it was a little more work yeah. than what you expected. Um, did you run into any uh, sort of conflicts either with constituents or, or uh, oh. colleagues or and no. how did you handle it? Well you might remember it was all over the news that Lake Elmo changed its um, its ordinance on when people could use motorized boats on the lake. Lake Elmo was the um, the second most restrictive you know lakes in the entire state and um, we took that head on and there was a lot of um, a lot of resistance to that. A lot of write-ups in the paper, a lot of um, you know, doomsday scenarios about what was going to happen. So we, that was in the spring. We went through a whole summer, a lot of monitoring through the DNR. And actually, I think on the lake that I live on, we had five surveillance cameras running um, from sunrise to sundown. And I don't think anyone in the, uh, on any of the lakes can say anything negative happened. And um, we also followed up and did an uh, anonymous survey throughout the city. And we found out only 28% of the people actually wanted to keep those restrictive hours. But that was a very uh, contentious issue. And uh, it, was, it was a learning experience mm -hmm. that people, people get passionate about some issues. And then on the flip side, when we vote to spend you know, $5 million to bring a sewer pipe up, no one shows up. So it's, it was an interesting learning experience. Yeah, that, that is interesting. And yeah. so when, when people's passions are ignited, uh, do they call you? Do they email you? Um, have you gotten a flood of emails or anything at this point? You know, over the, uh, the lake use, there was a lot of emails, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls. Um, uh, stuff, I guess, the closer it is to home, obviously, it, what's it, it affects. We just had an issue whether we would grant a variance to, a, uh, to allow somebody to build on a lot. And that that sparked some interest from in the community and then the phone calls and the emails start again. But again, for the, the larger issues, we, we really don't see as much. I know the mayor, the mayor obviously shoulders most of the burden than over the council members, but. Mm -hmm. um, is the mayor's a full-time position in Lake No, Elmo? he's not. He's the same as us, but he's our, he's our figurehead. Mm -hmm. And do you, guys, do you guys get salaries at the city level there? Or? Yeah, it's a small stipend. Yeah. Small stipend? Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, how about uh, looking forward to the, this next year? Uh, what are the issues that are going to be on your plate? Do you have any uh, goals as, as far as um, you know what you're going to do with the council or within the council? Right. The next year, we're just going to continue to work on the growth plan for Lake Elmo. Again, try and get out of the Met Council's MO, uh, memorandum of understanding, work with them to, sh to uh, grow Lake Elmo the way they'd like to see it grown. And mm -hmm and uh, take any uh, liability away from the, our taxpayers with this MOU, mm -hmm. um, try and get more businesses to come to Lake Elmo. Um, watch so how does, a, how does a city councilman, um, how do you actually go about getting more businesses? I mean, do you meet with the businesses or well, is it more about policy? It's policy. The mayor, the mayor again, being the figurehead, meets with the uh, businesses along with city staff, but uh, all we can do is make it an environment conducive to businesses uh, wanting to come in. Uh, we're we have a philosophy of less regulation. Uh, this is these are the antithesis of what Lake Elmo has been mm -hmm. up to this point. Less regulation um, allow people to prosper in their their own environment, their their business environment. Mm -hmm. Don't 
don't basically don't micromanage their business for them. Um, and that's, that's our philosophy. Mm -hmm. And we are so close to the Beltway in downtown St. Paul, uh, you know, it, people are flooding in to, uh, to get land and, and to start working, especially in the I-94 corridor, because they see there's a council in there that's going to allow them to, uh, to operate. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, State Senator Dave Thompson. Yeah. He was on at the beginning of the show. And, and one of the questions I asked him about was the, the divisiveness of our political era. And I'm not quite sure if you see it, if it's more on the top or if it's actually more on the bottom, neighbor against neighbor. And, and I just want to maybe just address people's perceptions of what politics really is. Like, when you're within the city council, do you feel like you're in this, like, liberal versus conservative thing or the Democrat versus Republican thing? Or is it more of, hey, guys, let's put our heads together, let's figure out solutions for the people, and, like you said, bring more jobs here, attract businesses? Right. During the campaign, there was, I mean, the, you still have an ideological bend to you, and mm -hmm. we are a nonpartisan office. Mm -hmm. However, so it, when people vote, there's no D there's or no R. There's no DRR behind okay. you. But, you know, people could kind of figure out where each side was, uh, you know, which person aligned to what side. And, it, you know, that being said, during the election we had that. We don't have partisan discussions at the city council level. It is what we're going to do for the community mm -hmm. and how to, how to best move Lake Elma forward. However, there are different philosophies on that, and that's where the... It, we wouldn't say the partisan line, but it's a philosophical difference, a divide between uh, different council members. Mm -hmm. And that, that does come out, but it doesn't come up in a partisan mm -hmm. way. And then how do you rate yourself in terms of workability? I mean, you, I mean, you, you seem like, to me, a person that can work with people from diverse stripes and whatnot. Right. Is that, is that true, a portrayal of you, and is it true in the city council? Yeah, I think so. I think all, all of us on the city council are doing a real good job of working together and uh, not necessarily meeting in the middle, but um, we're we're able to work together and come up to find solutions that uh, that are going to solve like almost problems. Mm -hmm. And how many more uh, years do you have left in, in your term? Here? I have three more years. You have three more yeah, years. It's a four-year term. And uh, sounds good. I'm yeah. not going to ask you about uh, plans for your future, but right. it's pretty obvious, I think, to myself and people watching that you have a bright future ahead of you in whatever leadership activities uh, right. that you take part in. So. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Is there any uh, any ways that people can get a hold of you or uh, learn more about uh, just who you are and what you stand they for? They can do that by contacting the city, um, and then they, they can get the email and website to the city to contact any of us uh, if need be. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, the campaign season is down. With the, or is done with the websites are shut down, and and uh, the email is just jblawyer at lakeelmo.org. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, Justin Bloyer, I really appreciate you coming on the show sure. here, and uh, please give uh, my best to your wife, and I yeah. uh, hope your family is healthy and happy and everything like that. Perfect. So. Thanks for having me, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. That is uh, City Councilman Justin Bloyer uh, appearing for the first time on the Tony Hernandez Show. We certainly appreciate uh, him coming on and talking more about uh, you know his first year in office and. I'm inspired by people like Justin because he's young, he's energetic, he's passionate, principled, and uh, you know he decided that he wanted to make his city a better place. He decided that he wanted to serve his community and his neighbors, and he went out there and he ran hard, and I watched him door knocking and putting up his own signs and uh, building coalitions with uh, people across Lake Elmo, and I was completely amazed by the work that he did, and lo and behold, he was victorious on... Uh, November of, of 2012, and it sounds like he's having a great first year in the city council at Lake Elmo, and he's accomplishing some things, and uh, looks like he's learning a bit too. So we're definitely going to be paying attention to Justin Bloyer and everything that he's going to be uh, working on and accomplishing here in these upcoming uh, times. 